Welcome to KJ and Tony Move to France. In today's video, we're answering some questions from our subscribers. So we're going to be talking about our transition here to Versailles, what it's like to be in Versailles versus Paris. We're going to talk a little bit about the visa process and registering our visa here in France and some other residency questions. So are you ready? I'm ready. All right, let's go. All right. All right, first question. How do you feel so far about our move in general, our move to France? Um, it's much better than I expected. I expected it to be great, obviously, uh, but Paris blew me away. Um, Versailles was uh, a little tough the first week or 10 days because of the weather. And you were sick. And I was sick. And I think those two things together uh, didn't help. Um, but once the weather warmed up a little bit, it's been in the high 50s. Uh, we've had a little bit of sun. I feel much better. Plus, we've, we've figured out how to get into Paris easy. And uh, we get in now in a half an hour, get home in a half an hour, and it's a piece mm -hmm. of cake. So, um, you know, I, I'm very happy. Mm -hmm. I'm happy as well, although I'm going to be honest and say that I'm not as happy. And I love Versailles. I don't want to like diss Versailles, but certainly it's not Paris. And to be in Versailles for two months, I mean, most people just take a day trip to Versailles and we're here for two months. But, so. but is there any city in the world that you would compare to Paris and say, it's great. It's just as good. It's better. Mm, there, Not you, yet. Mm, right. Not yet. Okay. Paris I'm, is number one so far. And by on leaps our, and bounds. On our list. Yeah. And we knew that after the first week here in Versailles. And Versailles is beautiful. And we love the fact that our son is with us. And that is what is most important. And that's what brought us to Versailles is because we were looking for a two bedroom within our budget. And that's another thing. We have a budget that we're you know working with and we don't want to go over that budget we want to make sure that we're staying within our means and that's it, the goal and that's an important part of doing this right is having a budget if you do this without a budget you better be wealthy um, right. it, but even then it may be a problem for you because it's easy for to spend a lot of money here not just in rent but in restaurants and clothes and Uber and things like that, it's very easy. We walk almost everywhere except when we go to Paris. Mm -hmm. We're in pretty good shape and we, we want to stay in shape. Um, but we, we like to walk. Uh, we walked around Paris a lot, uh, more than we're doing here, uh, just because there's so much to see in Paris. But even here, we, we've walked to the palace at least twice, if not more. Mm -hmm. uh, we've walked now beyond the palace a couple of times. Well, and that's one thing that Versailles has been, it, Versailles has been reminding me a lot of my childhood growing up because when I was young, I grew up um, in a place called Sayville, Long Island. And when I was a kid, we walked everywhere, mm -hmm. you know, before you had a car. And I remember walking downtown and walking to the mall. And so this has been reminding me of that because we're a little off the beaten path. When we were in Paris, we were right in the heart of the Latin Quarter and we were right there like you came down from the apartment and there's restaurants and shops and everything right at your fingertips. At every level too. At every you, level. You could yeah. have really nice clothing stores or you could have cheap ones. Right. You could have McDonald's or you could have fine dining. Mm -hmm. You had the Seine right there. You had Notre Dame right there. Beautiful. It was it was perfect. And now here we have to walk. Yeah. A lot. Yeah, But we walked to the Arc from our apartment that we was did. like three and a half miles one way. Uh, we walked to the uh, back from uh, well to and fro from uh, the Eiffel Tower. We walked to the mall several mm -hmm. times. We walked to my favorite hot dog place. We did. Well, so for me, the bottom line, because this is the first question, and we're like talking for ten minutes okay. about the first question. So the bottom line for me is, I much prefer Paris, but I. I am enjoying Versailles and I'm especially enjoying it because our son is here visiting us and we're getting to take him in to Paris and experience Paris plus all of the, the wonderful shops. We've, we're going to be doing a video on some of our favorite places here in Versailles that we have discovered. So we'll be sharing that with you down the road here I, in a little bit. Yeah, I think for me, 
I never uh, expected to, to favorably compare Versailles to Paris. Um, you know, even before we loved Paris as much as we do, I never thought a, a, a city slash town like Versailles would, would be comparable to uh, Paris. It'd be like uh, a suburb of New York being comparable to Manhattan. Yeah. It's, it's just not possible. Paris. There's too many things to do there compared to here. But what I love about Versailles is that we've become part of the community a little bit, mm -hmm. where that's not as easy to do in a city the size of Paris. We, we go to the same coffee shop every day. Uh, I work in the coffee shop as uh, uh, writing, you know, because it's, it's also an internet cafe. An internet cafe. Mm -hmm. So we have coffee and breakfast, and, and uh, I spend two to three hours a day there every day. And I've become very friendly with the people that work there, the owner, and we've done that. We have a, a, a small grocery store uh, nearby. Uh, that's grocery store is maybe overstating it a little <laughs> bit. But a little it, convenient shop. A, a little convenient shop that's open all hours on Christmas Day, New Year's Day, it mm -hmm. doesn't matter. And the owner is there all the time, so we become friendly with him. Mm -hmm. The bakery we go to all the time. So mm -hmm. we've become part of the community here. Well, I think one of the, the distinctions to make is what you're looking for. Because if you're looking for a vacation, mm -hmm. Paris is definitely you know, the, sure. the way to go in terms of staying there and then taking that day trip or a couple of days in Versailles. If you're looking to settle, which is what we're doing, it, you may prefer, depending upon your situation, a family community. Like this is definitely a family community. There's lots of families there. You see a lot of young kids. We're right by a couple of schools that are uh, close by. So I, I feel like it's much more of a family community, sure. even though uh, there's a sense of community in Paris. It's just we were right in a touristy area. I, I think the, the thing to do is to go and experience all of the different arrondissements in Paris and then decide maybe where we want to live in Paris. That's just an idea that's floating out there right now. Well, I think so we'll that, see. I think Paris is big enough that you might end up in an arrondissement that takes you just as long to get to where you want to go in Paris than Versailles as takes Versailles. you. Versailles, true. So. Okay, we, we need to move on to the next question, sure. or this video is going to be like an hour long. Okay. All right, next question is, do we miss anything or what do we miss from the U.S.? Is there anything that you miss from the U.S.? I'm listing all the things right now. Can you hear it? <laughs> he means none. Like none. he misses nothing. Nothing. Um, perhaps, perhaps uh, the weather in December and January in mm -hmm. Florida. Mm -hmm. But even that, it's not extreme here. Um, so we had some days in the high 20s that were cold, but it's been in the 50s for about a week now. Yeah. And so it, I don't miss not one thing, not even mm -hmm. a single thing. About the U.S. Certainly you might say, oh, well, of course you miss Lex and Troy. And oh, sure. But you talk to him Almost virtually every day. Every day. Yeah. And we All talk to our other son every week. He's in Idaho. So it's not like we would necessarily be seeing them anyway. And this is not for me to say that the... France is better than the United States or dissing mm -hmm. the United States. We came here for a reason. Right. And we're because we want to have an adventure and explore and settle somewhere that was definitely more laid back than the United States. It is much, much more, more laid back, back even in Paris. So it's it's a completely different outlook on mm -hmm. life and mm -hmm. And at our age, I think that's what I was looking for. Mm -hmm. So that's why I don't miss anything. I, do, I miss being able to watch football games at a reasonable time. But, you know, I knew that coming in. So, um, But as far as missing people, there are several people who are close to us sure. who say, I now talk to you and see you more, more. <laughs> than I did before. So... You well, know. because we make more of an effort knowing that we're so far away, we... we are intentional really sure. about communicating with people. Whereas when we were back in the US, it was more sort of like, oh, I know I'm gonna see this person eventually or I'll talk to them eventually. 
Whereas now here in France, we're being very intentional about making sure we're staying in contact with certain people. And with that in mind, I think we should mention the whole phone thing about how it's been very easy, yes. a very easy process for us to get French phone numbers. It's much cheaper here for us to have a French phone number. And we do all of our communicating through WhatsApp, which costs nothing. Right. So and, it's been really, yeah, really easy. Yeah. And, uh, you know, at first there are people in the United States that we were communicating with that struggled with WhatsApp, right? Mm -hmm. Mostly because they never heard of it. And, yeah. and I, and I want to say this kindly, mostly they were older people. Right, like not, us. Like us, yeah. <laughs> not people in their twenties and thirties. Right. They 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 probably use WhatsApp every day. Mm -hmm. But once we explained it to them, and once we worked it through with them, I remember one close friend I have, who we were on top of the Arc de Triomphe, and I called him with the video uh, mm -hmm. on WhatsApp, and he was just amazed, and he was sold from then on, and, and yeah. so so it, it 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 was something that was overcome very easily. Well, and I think one of the things to keep in mind is that like all of these apps, like WhatsApp, like Marco Polo is another one that I use with friends and family where you can send videos back and forth, is that they'll, when you log on, it says pay such and such $4.99 a month or $5.99 a month or whatever it is. You do not have to, like a lot of people download it and it says that and then they think, oh, I have to pay for this. No, there's a free version that you can use. You absolutely don't have to pay for it. So keeping that in mind. Yeah, I've had WhatsApp for years and I've mm -hmm. never paid a dime. great. All right, next question. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, so this is a question about our visa process, registering our visas. And we did an entire video all about the visa uh, process, obtaining our long-term visas, which I'll link in the description so you can go and check that out if you're interested. When we arrived, you're required to register your visa once you arrive in France. And they give you, I think it's uh, two months to do that, to register your visa. Do it right away. That's what I would recommend. As you soon don't as want you, to forget to yeah, do it. Yeah, you want to do it right away. And the process for doing that is just you go online they'll give you a little slip of paper that tells you exactly you know where to go online the website and then you fill out the information you need to have an address i used our first airbnb address and they ask for your email and you have to pay 200 dollars in order to register each person has to pay 200 dollars so we did that and I know that some people had reached out and they were concerned about the fact that we're changing addresses and what if they send you mail. Well, it says in the confirmation that we received, it says that they will reach out to us via email first. And if they can't reach us via email, then they will send something in the mail. So I'm checking our spam folder. I'm making sure that I'm on top of that. But then what that entails is you have to, um, they'll reach out to you and you need to make an appointment for a, a medical exam. And then once you go in and you complete that exam, they'll give you a certificate and you need that certificate in order to renew your visa. So that's as far as I've gotten in terms of the process. We're waiting and I think that they're a little behind in their process because one of the subscribers reached out to me who has been through this and she's been in France since I think July, she said, and she still has not received her appointment to go in because then you have to go into like the, the what they call the perfect, per, I'm saying this wrong, the perfecter or yeah. the, like the police station. Right. And, um, Anyway, we're waiting for that. And she's been waiting since July, so well, if, I'm, I'm not too worried about it because I think that they're just backed up. Yeah, I'm not worried about it either, but but if I can maybe condense everything that KJ said for a moment, <laughs> what you need is someone as organized as she is. Mm -hmm. You need someone very organized from the beginning to the end. Someone who goes through all the paperwork gets an understanding of it and it's not like it's really that um, 
uh, you don't oh, have nice. to be a lawyer or yeah. anything like that to okay. know it. It's just that you have to pay attention to every line. Mm -hmm. And anything, in fact, if you remember, when we went for our interview for our visas, one of the reasons we got in so easily was that you were so uh, prepared. Mm -hmm. Every form they asked for, you had it completed already. Mm -hmm. And you had them completed for me. And they weren't going to let me, uh, if you've seen one of our older videos, we were supposed to have two separate appointments, and we didn't know that. We only mm -hmm. had one. And KJ's uh, personality and preparedness were what got us that. And, uh, you know, so you need to be very organized, be patient, complete every line. Mm -hmm. uh, don't just skim over stuff. So. Yeah, and I'm not really worried about, well, what if they send it to the address? I was thinking even of reaching out to that Airbnb in Paris because we had a really good stay there. We had a really good relationship with the um, the manager of the property and just letting him know if he happens to see anything come through, if he could alert us and let us know. So I, I don't think that that's going yeah. to be, a, we'll find out, we'll let you know, but I don't think that's going to be a problem. And then there's the international driver's license sure. that Tony has just received in the mail. So sure. why don't you talk a little bit about that process? So the driver's license situation in Europe is murky. Okay, it's not straightforward. But we're driving from Versailles to Nice and I need to rent a car. And I didn't want any problem with that. I didn't want the day of the rental for me to get there and say, oh, you don't have this or that. And so uh, I looked into it, and believe it or not, AAA in the United States is the only place that you can get an international license. And you go through their paperwork. I think it cost me $89. Mm -hmm. um, and I send them a copy of my driver's license. I send them uh, electronic versions of, of passport pictures. And they created uh, within, once, once everything was done, I would say within 72 hours, the reason it's $89 is about 60 of that is FedEx. Uh, within 72 hours, I had my license. And so now I have a, an international li driver's license that is good for two years. I could have gotten it for longer, uh, but my uh, Florida license uh, would, have, would have expired in the third year, and I didn't want the confusion of that. So somewhere in the next two years, I'll, if I go back to Florida to visit, I'll make sure I go in and get my license uh, updated and we'll go from there. And I'll be doing my application sometime this week. The only reason I didn't do mine is because I had a glitch with my driver's license back in <laughs> Florida. And not for the reason why some of you may think, like I didn't, <laughs> I didn't get any speed. My family would be like, you got a speeding ticket. I haven't gotten a speeding ticket in years, but I've had my fair share of speeding yeah. tickets. So it was just a, a glitch based upon us selling our cars and turning in our plates. And so there was a mix up or miscommunication. We misunderstood this letter that we received in the mail about the plate and we didn't follow up with that. And then they, they suspended my license <laughs> because I guess you have to pay, like everything costs money. Everything is a fee. And so we had to pay, we had to like, I don't know, we had to pay something. So now I have to, I had to pay more because my license got suspended. Scoff law, uh, scoff law. So I, I finally fixed that. And oh, and this is a funny story. So this relates to the phone. So even though now we're like, oh my gosh, the phone is so easy at first, we were really struggling because we couldn't make a call to the U.S. <laughs> we were, except on WhatsApp. Except on WhatsApp. And you can't call businesses, businesses on WhatsApp. So if we needed to call a business, we needed to call through a normal phone number, not just WhatsApp. So we were trying to make U.S. calls from from our from our phones with our international you know number and. As far as I knew, we had the package where you could do that. You could call the US and we were so frustrated because we kept calling and we couldn't reach anybody. We would get this like error message that was in French and this was weeks we were doing this and we were like, what is wrong? What's going And then finally I Googled 
how you make an international. See, we have to start by Googling, not ending by Googling, not Googling <laughs> just in frustration. So the, the thing that we were doing wrong is we weren't putting it, I think you have to do like zero, zero, one, right? As opposed to just one. As In the United to States, we're used to just doing one. You have to do zero, zero, one. So I looked this up on Google, and then I'm like, Tony, <laughs> you just have to add zero, zero, one to the number, and it should go through. And sure enough, <laughs> the first. So then I was finally able to reach the DMV. Why I bring this up is because I'm like, I can't reach the Department of Motor Vehicles. I can't call this 800 number that I have to call in order to fix what's going on with my license to like pay this fee. So finally, I reached them. I talked to this wonderful young lady who was asking me all sorts of questions about France. And she helped guide me through making the payment that I needed to make and clearing my license. So now I can get an international license too. So I'll be doing that this week. We'll see what they say. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. All right, moving on. The next question is, and these are questions from, from our subscribers that we have received. And if you are interested in asking us a question, we have a new travel blog a link in the description where you can uh, subscribe to that blog. And that's an easy way to just ask us a question so it doesn't get lost in the comments. And we'll be doing another one of these down the road. But one of the questions was, what is what has been the most difficult aspect of moving from the USA to France so far? Well, I would say for me, um, there has not, first of all, been something that's not somewhat easily insurmountable. Mm -hmm. uh, the language certainly is a challenge mm -hmm. um, because we walk in knowing very little about French. Uh, so that's been a challenge, but you know, people are nice here, contrary to what a lot of Americans think, but uh, we've been treated well. And so that's been a challenge. Uh, not knowing the buildings generally don't have elevators has been another challenge. And if you rent here, you might want to make sure that you have an elevator if you're on an elevated floor. So, uh, and by the way, in, in Europe, uh, the first floor, what we in the United States think of as the first floor is zero. Zero, yeah. The floor number one is our floor number two, and so on and so forth. So uh, if you, somebody tells you your apartment's on the third floor, you're really what you think as an American, I'm being on the fourth floor. All right, for me, the most difficult part has been the transition to this apartment in Versailles. That's really been the most difficult because even though our apartment in Paris was much smaller in a lot of ways, it was much more comfortable than, than this apartment and much more well located than this apartment. So that whole transition of then you getting sick and then I got sick and being- the, the weather was bad. The weather was bad, it was freezing cold and being fearful of what happens if I need to take you to the hospital. So I looked up, <laughs> I looked up all of the emergency numbers in the area and I actually have a, um, a, a PDF download of that in France. Like I what you- I wasn't that sick. What, but I, but it made me think of like what what if like what happens, and that's another thing to mention. In order to come to France, you need to have insurance. You need to have international mm -hmm. insurance for an entire year, and so we have that. But I haven't really you know looked at it since we bought it. Mm -hmm. But it made me think of those things. So if you're interested and you want a copy of that PDF, let me know because I would be happy to send it to you. But just having that information made me feel a lot better. So that was really difficult. That whole transition from Paris to Versailles was, was pretty challenging, wouldn't you say? Wouldn't you agree? I, I would agree that it was challenging. The apartment doesn't bother me. Um, yes, there are uncomfortable parts of the apartment. Uh, the seating is not so comfortable, mm -hmm. so on and so forth. We have not, in either apartment, had TV, even though there are TVs here. Mm -hmm. um, but that's been a positive. Yeah. So I, I, I don't find it uh, challenging. Mm -hmm. uh, I, would I prefer it to be where we were in Paris? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But we're not. 
but that that has been the most challenging that tran- that transition but now we're prepared for it you know we've learned we've learned from that transition and so now going from versailles to nice we're we're more prepared well i'm going from nice to our next location which is saint tropez we're on the bottom floor next to the pool. Yes. So. We have an elevator <laughs> in uh, nice, nice. Okay. And then we're on the bottom floor in Saint Tropez. So we're learning. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're learning. And that's what this was all about, right. right? One of the things I loved about Paris is you would be working on something and I'd just leave and go explore and find mm-hmm. places that we'd go together after. That's not so easy here, but we're doing a little bit of that too. Yeah, we are. All right. Next question. Okay. Next to last question. Okay is what has been the best aspect of our transition from the U.S. to France? Well, I think for me is learning uh, the history of uh, not just Paris, but France in general. I'm a, a bit of a history buff, and, and but never had looked at France seriously. and. Uh, reading up on, on I, I really love the architecture, uh, the River Seine, uh, the architecture in Versailles, the palace. Uh, though that's been really kind of neat. Mm-hmm. For me, I, I just have to say the the adventure of it, mm-hmm. like the overall adventure of going to different places and having new experiences. And although ultimately we do want to find our forever home, so to speak, Mm -hmm. right? Where we're going to have our home base, which then we will travel our plan, you know, which actually is a part of the next question. So for this question, it is the, the adventure. I like the adventure of going and experiencing new places and learning the history. Um, the cathedral was just one of the many different experiences that was just really amazing. And basically two blocks away. Yeah. Right? And keep in mind that when you have an adventuresome uh, view of what you're doing, you're going to hit bumps in the road because you're going to try things that aren't the way you thought they were going to be or you'd like mm-hmm. them to be. And so to me, that's part of uh, you know the apartment and... The cold that we ran into, us getting sick. Nobody thinks about getting sick when they go to a place. And so, you know. It's all a part of the experience. Yeah, and so yes, embracing absolutely. the challenges sure. as much as the the fun sure, aspects sure. of it as well. Sure. It's all an adventure and I'm loving it. Yeah. Yeah. And then the final question is what are our plans for staying in France? So what are our plans? That was one of the subscribers. I, I think because I think this was a question based upon my response to her initial uh, question about um, I can't even remember what it was, but I was talking about how we may not stay in France, although that's not our preferred choice. Right. I mean, our number one choice is to live in France. That's where we want to be. Our adventure this year is going from place to place to determine exactly where we want to be before we make that decision. I mean, Tony is leaning more towards Paris. I am too, but there's a part of me that really, um, the chateau, the very small (laughs) chateau that we can operate as a and b is also very appealing to me. So we want to go check out some areas where that might be a possibility. And, and yet, we don't know, we're very open to that, but our preference is to stay in France. My, my plan is really kind of not to have a plan, Yeah. right? That's part of the adventure. Yes, everything that KJ said is true, but things have changed even in the month and a half, two months we've been here. Uh, as an example, we shortened Nice to, to one month. We finalized Saint-Tropez. Uh, we found a chateau that might make sense. Um, things change and be mm-hmm. opening to open to the adventure and not having too much of a rigid plan. Mm-hmm. That's you know part of it because to me the going to Nice, part of that is wow you're not far from Milan, you're not far from Switzerland, uh, you're not far from Cannes, you're not from far from Monte Carlo. 
so there's all those aspects of being there. Saint-Tropez has Saint-Tropez, the weather, which Nice has too, not too far from Marseille. So no matter where we go, there's something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we're just really excited to continue the adventure. I mean, 2022 was really um, a life-changing year for us. And we are looking forward to 2023 being the year where we find where it is we're, we're going to settle. And we're really excited to share it with you. And so we're going to be having more of the adventure videos coming to you, but periodically we'll also be sharing these videos relative to where we are in that process. And as you ask questions that we think are important for everybody to know about, we'll have these kind of videos where we address seven or eight different questions and, and hit the whole uh, gamut of what people are asking. And we're hoping to increase our production of videos to have like this one we're going to post midweek. So we're going to have two videos this week and we're hoping to do that moving forward, but not until after our son leaves to go back to school because we really want to enjoy experiencing France with him. So for example, when we went out on New Year's Eve, you know, we're not carrying a camera. Uh, with us everywhere we go and taking videos. We want to have family time and enjoy being together and not be, have everything be <laughs> videotaped. So Sure, and part of that too is when we went to the palace and he was like in awe of, yeah. of how opulent the palace is. And when we've gone to Paris, he's seen the architecture and been in awe of that, been in awe of Notre Dame. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the, you know, that's, that's a kind of a combination of of the family enjoying each other and being able to video. Yeah, absolutely. So. so once again, just as a reminder, we recently launched our travel blog and there's a link in the description if you'd like to subscribe to that. In that blog, you'll get more of like the backstory and the history of how this all came about, where we moved from the US to France. And of course, if you haven't yet subscribed to our channel, Hit the subscribe button. Hit that subscribe button. And if you liked this video, hit the like button. <laughs> and thanks so much for joining us today. We hope you have a very beautiful and a blessed day. Thank you. Bye. Bye.